Hello, welcome back to the Paid Search Podcast. My name is Jason Rothman. As always, I'm joined by the great Chris Schaefer. Chris, how's it going today? I'm good, Jason. So formal. I get a hello, or maybe that's not to me. That's probably to everyone else, but hello. Hello. Good hello. to see you. Yeah, how's it going? I'm good? I'm good. Jason, my uh, yeah. my wife just bought me flowers. Why, why is that? Um, but not like, you, not like you think. I'm not like a guy who likes flowers. I don't see really the... The value, what what she did buy me. I don't know if you've heard about these. I'm holding it here. Um, it's these bulbs that mm-hmm. you just like put in dirt, and you can put in a jar or something, and then you water mm-hmm. them, and then they just keep blooming over and over and over. They're like really neat. I like those. So today we're talking about five <laughs> questions to ask yourself after launching a brand new Google Ads campaign. Chris, last week we talked about what to do wrong basically, and what to do right. Um, we gave examples of how you can do things wrong when you launch a brand new uh, Google Ads account. This week, we're kind of taking ourselves two weeks, a month into the campaign, into mm-hmm. the account. And there's five questions that we ask ourselves. Um, and we're going to talk about like what we look for, basically. And that's what today's episode is going to be about. It is. Uh, thank you for reminding us. Thank you. Yeah. Other than that, how, how's it going? I mean, you're, you're wearing a T-shirt. I just don't. I mean, yeah. I don't care about these flat. Whatever she got okay. you, it doesn't okay. matter to me I, or anyone I, else. I, I, okay, they're they're neat. As long okay. as it matters to you and her, that's the important thing. That I is. Guess. That's what's important. I said thank you, and and she was excited because I, I I think it's kind of neat to watch life bloom in a jar over and over again. Jason, I'm just simple. I'm a simple man. Yeah, with a simple shirt. Yeah, yeah, the shirt was a bad idea. It looks like I'm. Like, it looks. It, it like, looks. It looks at at first glance. It looks like just a just an undershirt. Yeah, it just, looks like an undershirt, but it's but not. It's not. I it's, can see that's somewhat beige or something. Yeah, it's it's a nice shirt. Um, and it yeah, but on camera, yeah, it was a bad decision. But you know, I'm not known for making great fashion decisions on the podcast because it's a podcast, Jason. It's a podcast. And yeah, speaking of a podcast, I sent you a little note there in the. Uh, chat as we get going here um appreciate you looking at that appreciate everyone being here man 349 episodes in chris we're going to be at 350 episodes in um yeah happy uh real housewives of new jersey oh gosh season premiere day if you celebrate (laughs) saw someone posted that on twitter looks like there's two new cast members i'm looking very much forward to that okay uh, but before we get there, we have to be here. And here is a brand new Google Ads campaign about a month after launch. Yeah. Um, Chris, before we get into the message from Optio, before we get into the main kind of segment of the episode here, any thoughts on any kind of overview, overall thoughts on a new campaign? It, to me, it's a very special, very challenging time in a Google Ads campaign life it's a very important time a lot, of, a lot can go right a lot can go wrong got to be on it yeah there's the yeah i mean there's there's two points of 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 stress in the life of a google ads campaign when you're just starting and you know you're 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 going to see where everything's going to land and then when things start going wrong at some point, you know, it could be months, could be years down the line, but at some point things might are going wrong. And that's another point of, of, of stress. So yeah, there's a lot of, um, a lot of potential things that, uh, you can misread. You can misread the data and make some bad decisions. And I'm glad we're talking about, you know, how to, how to, how to read it, how to react, you know, mm. what to look for, um, you know, the, looking the dual, for the, the, the directions, the dual Kings of metaphors here. And, if last week's episode was researching which car to buy, this okay. week's episode is you're on the test drive. Um, That's what the first month is. It's a test drive. It and is. You want to. You you were mentioning things that can go wrong long term, and you just really want to set yourself up for success during that first month yep. and uh, kind of run your campaigns on a test drive and and ensure success and ensure stress stress free advertising. Yeah. Uh, as time goes on. For sure. Uh, but why don't you tell us about Optio, and then we'll get into the first question we ask ourselves after launching a brand new Google Ads account, which is, "Am I bidding too low?" Speaking of spe- stress, stress free, I want to remind you about Optio because that is the best solution that you can possibly get when it comes to running a stress free 
campaign. We're about to give you a long list of all these things you have to think about. And here's the cool part about Optio. It tells you what you should be thinking about because it has a built-in checklist. It's like a checklist for you without you, you having to maintain the checklist. It goes out, knows what it should be looking for, checks for those things, checks for things that sh are 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 off the grid, things that are completely wrong, things that are uh, that need immediate attention, things that need attention in about a week, things that need attention once a quarter. Um, you know those kind of things. It checks for those and tells you, hey, here's the information, here's what we think you should do, but you make the decision. And that is the great part about this. They don't assume that you're an idiot. They know that there are smart managers out there. You can make good decisions about your Google Ads account, and they provide that platform for you to read analyze and take action on each of those decisions. Boom, 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 get them done. One, two, three, it's over. You've made the adjustments. Your campaign is now performing better than ever. And think about it. If you run 50, 100, 200 accounts in your agency, you implement this tool, it's gonna bring up the level of your management everywhere. So please go check out Optio, that's O-P-T-E-O, dot com slash PSP for a two month free trial of this amazing tool. That is a special offer you will only get at optio.com slash PSP. Okay, Chris. So you just launched a new Google ads campaign account, whatever new advertiser. You're about a month. Yeah. You're about, I don't know. When, when do you start asking questions and looking mm. at the data first hour, first day, first week? Um, I definitely turn everything on and then walk away in like no a way like a, no, like a slow cooker. Yeah. I turn it on and walk away in no way. Do I check what's happening day of I, that? That is actually a rule that applies on day one and day 400. I don't look at things day of, I, I feel like that's probably a bad idea. Um, at least on the what's with day 400. Are you saying when you set something up new in an account that's been running? Yeah. Year. Yeah. If I make yeah. changes or if I want to gotcha. see like something that's going on, I don't check today. I always check 24 hours ago. Gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we're talking like first week, first couple weeks, you're looking sure. at the data. Um, but I think it also applies all the way up to the full first month. And the first question is, am I bidding too low? Uh, I specifically asked myself that, Chris, you can you can go at it a different way if you do, if you ask yourself if you're bidding too high early mm -hmm. on. But early on, I'm I'm worried about bidding too low. And I'm worried about not getting my ad shown, therefore not spending budget, therefore not getting data, therefore not figuring out what's going to work. Um, you very much like to get lead, to get sales, you have to get leads, to get leads, you have to get clicks. Mm -hmm. To get clicks, you have to bid enough to show up. So am I bidding too low? That's that's the first question. Is that something you look at uh, prominently very early, like I do? Um, yes. Day one, well, yeah, after day one, after, you know, after the launch. Um, I mean, the first thing that I check, uh, you know, first thing that I look for, uh, the first checkbox that I'm looking to see, number one, did I get clicks? And did I spend the full budget? And if I spent the full budget, uh, was I competitive? You know, did I did I show up above organic in any kind of significant amount? You know, was it fifty percent above organic, or was it only thirty percent above organic, or was it seventy percent, or possibly, like you said, am I bidding too high? Maybe I was at a ninety-five percent above organic, and I only got like two clicks. I'm bidding too high. You know, I was expecting a little more. Obviously, the engine's a little hot here. I'm bidding too high. I need to cool down a bit. Let's spend a little less per click. Um, you know, maybe maybe look at max clicks and lower those max clicks. Or, uh, you know, if, if I have some other kind of manual bidding option in there, um, you know, lower that, uh, that level. But, yeah, that's absolutely something that I look at. Um, first thing, right away. So... If you're bidding too low, we talked about the consequences of that, why we don't want to do it, because you're not going to get clicks, therefore you're not going to get leads and, and figure out what's going to work. Yeah. Uh, how do you know? And and for me, um, I think there's two things I look at. One is I didn't spend the full budget. So if the daily budget is $30 a day, yeah. we run 30 days a month or 
every day in an average of 30.4 days. Stuff you know is a Google Ads manager out here, Chris. 30.4 is the average amount of days in the month. Um, and 30 times 30, that's like uh, 900. And we, and we spent like 400 in the first 30 days. Yeah. I'm not worried if we spend like 870, sure. 850, yeah, so what? or something like that, but something drastic where it's like, no, we're not spending the budget. We don't have the limited by budget status. We've well underspent the budget. Uh, that's a sign that we're bidding too low. Um, now, it doesn't mean we're bidding too low, but it's a sign. And from that point, what I do is I look at the absolute top percentage column and I see what percent of the time am I showing up number one. Hmm. And I also look at absolute, or excuse me, I also look at top percentage. What what percent of the time am I showing above organic? Um, but I look at those two position columns. And if my positions are low, like we're only number one, it, it doesn't matter if it's 30, 50%, whatever it is. If it's below 90, I know I can bid more and spend more of the yeah. budget and get yeah. more volume. If it is very low, like 20, 30%, that's a sign that I'm bidding pretty low. And why don't you speak to top percentage column? What do you look for in that top percentage column? What would show you that, hey, we're under, we're not spending the budget. My top percentage is this, and that means I'm bidding way too low. What what kind of number range are you looking for there? Yeah, if I'm not spending the full budget and I see a top percentage that is, you know, 50 or below, 50% or below, um, then that means to me, I have a lot of room to push. Now, if I'm not spending the full budget and I see like a 70 or 80 percent absolute or percent top, mm -hmm. um, uh, which by the way, we're referring to column metrics. There, there's a, uh, comp there, these are in the performance tab of the columns. They're the only position metrics in the performance tab uh, that you'll see. So uh, that's what these are, percentage absolute top and percentage top. That's what we're referring to. So percentage top, if it's you know 80% and I'm not spending the full budget, that tells me I don't really have a bidding issue. Instead, I probably have a uh, location or keyword targeting. or targeting, targeting issue, issue yeah. at this point. I, I'm targeting too small. My, 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 my keyword, something's too narrow if I see a high percentage there. Yeah, and those columns are very very different. They have very similar names, absolute top percentage and top percentage. Yeah. But if I, but I'll give you an example, like 50% in each column or 50% absolute top and 50% top, those are drastically different pieces of data. Like if you show up number one, 50% of the time, I show That's... up number one, 50% of the time on plenty of accounts. That's like a normal piece of data. Yeah. You could be well be spending your full budget, getting yeah. great performance balancing that line of bidding enough to get volume, but bidding low enough to get the cost per lead you want. But a 50% top percentage, I can't tell you the last time I saw a 50%. That's like, it doesn't sound extremely low, but if half the time you're showing below the 10th organic result, yeah, and basically not getting any traffic down there, uh, that's a to me, that's a sign that you've got plenty of room Mm -hmm. uh, to move up. So I just wanted to show how different those columns are. Uh, Chris, do you look at the impression share data? Um, like how much you lost due to rank if you, if you're worried about underspending the budget early on? I didn't know if you wanted to go this deep, but I, I want to, yeah, I, I want to, I want to know what you do. Yeah, I do. I do. I mean, I, I mean, in reality, I look at the impression uh, loss due to rank first. That's what, you know, right after I look at, did I spend the full budget? Did I get clicks? Did I spend the full budget? And then I want to know how hot is the engine running on this Google ads? And I look at the search loss due to rank search yeah. lost is parentheses rank. That's the name of the column that we're referring to. It's in the competitive yeah. metrics tab. And ad rank is made up of bid times quality score plus some other stuff, but mm -hmm. bid is a big component there. Yeah. And if you're missing out on a lot of impressions due to ad rank, meaning partially and probably due to bidding in a large way, then you can bid more, have a higher ad rank, and miss out on less traffic due to ad rank. Mm -hmm. So if your impression share loss due to ad rank is 
40 percent 60 percent 80 percent that means 40 60 80 percent of the time you're not showing simply because your ad rank isn't high enough you can get your ad rank higher by bidding more yeah yeah so that's a that's very much a clue uh column as well I'm trying to think if there's anything else when it comes to bidding uh for me it's 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 ad rank and it's position columns i, mean, I can't think of and, and those tie back to the bid i can't i can't think of yeah anything I mean, else which says you're bidding too low nothing yeah nothing concrete really i mean you can get those giant red letters that show up that say you know below first page bid but i don't consider that a concrete measurement of telling you where you're yeah because then you can be. look at your data and see if it's actually yeah happening that because you could have a great impression share and it still show up there so i don't consider that important now do, do you agree with the the fact that the or the claim here that the am i bidding too low needs to be the question and not am i bidding too high and the reason i'm mm. The reason I ask myself that and not if I'm bidding too high is because bidding too high is not it's not a problem that is difficult to correct for later on. We're talking mm -hmm. about ensuring success in the future. If I bid too low and never fix that, it slows things down and we don't get data and we don't really know what we could be accomplishing. If I bid too high, it's very simple. I'll see that I'm limited by budget. Maybe I can pull back a little bit. I look at my positions, but I'm getting what I want. I'm getting traffic and getting leads, and I can just fine-tune it yeah. after the point. And it's going to throw it in my face. I'm not going to miss that I'm bidding too high. I'm going to be limited by budget. Yeah. I'm going to see absolute top 90%. I'm going to know, oh, I've got room to pull back if I want. But I think bidding too low is a mistake that is easy to miss sometimes if you don't focus in on it. And that's why I feature it prominently here on the five questions to ask. Do you, do you agree with that, that it's a bigger concern than bidding too high early on? I do agree. I do agree with you. Um, I think that if I had a choice, if I'd rather my system be running bids too high or too low, I would rather them be running too high rather than low. Because if they're running yeah, low, of course. Yeah. you, what, what, what's the worst that would happen well you don't spend or you you get you get the bottom of the barrel as far as the quality of traffic you're showing up below yeah. organic and you and you, your click through rates are absolutely awful you know you're never getting any kind of volume from it you're never getting a chance you know as well as i do when you're in first position conversion rates a little bit better in first position traffic compared quality. to second but a lot of the time, yeah. A lot of the time. It's industry by industry, but yeah. Yeah, that's true. It changes, yeah. but the, in in general, I would prefer to at least be there to give it a chance. And if I'm bidding too high, what's the worst? Well, I'm burning through money too quick, but I sure am gathering a lot of data. I'm making, you know, I'm possibly getting some successes, but mm -hmm. I could be getting more if I cooled off a little on the bids. And if you want data on the concern of bidding too low when it comes to a traffic quality uh, issue you can segment out your data by what is it top versus other chris is that what it's yeah. called mm -hmm. top versus other and top would be clicks that came from ads that were listed above, above the organic, organic. results yeah. other i don't know why they use the word other but it's because it's one thing but other showing up on the page somewhere yeah yeah are and the, for search campaigns are are ads that were clicked below the organic results yeah and you can look at where your conversions come from and Almost every time, Chris, it seems like all the conversions come from yeah. the ads that were clicked up at, unless, at the top of the page. Unless you have a specific campaign where you are strategically pushing for that super cheap CPC and trying to go for that super cheap traffic and you're going for kind of long tail types of stuff, you really don't have any business showing up the majority of your, your searches in the lower or the other uh, positions, you know, down at the bottom. And, and now we're in, you know, a, a world of infinite scrolling on google.com, yeah. you know, not just mobile, it's now on desktop. So, you know, now, uh, you know, and, and, and what's interesting is while I've been using this infinite scrolling thing, you know, what, what happens is when I keep scrolling, it's really just a precursor to me, just going back to the top and doing a different search. I don't ever just keep scrolling and find what I'm looking for as I keep scrolling down. I probably don't make any mm. clicks down at the bottom uh, as I start scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. It usually ends up being um, you know something where 
uh, I make a uh, I make a decision to go back into a different kind of search. Yeah, what are you doing down there? Yeah, there's in the nothing 80th good. position. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, the, the this is uh this is fascinating. The pages have gone away. No more pages on on yeah. desktop. There is no first page. There I is never went to page. page two, and now I'll never have a chance. <laughs> never have a chance. It's gone. Yeah. There is no page. The, two. the kids will never know what it was like on page two. <laughs> Back in my day, you had to click. You couldn't do just just scrolling all the time. Next question here, Chris. I think it's an important one, an important one. Are my keywords working? Mm. Um, too open of a question, or do you ask yourself that when you're looking at a month one campaign? That, I, th- I, th- I think that question is important. I don't think I think it's absolutely the second thing. I think your your prior- prioritization of these questions are right on um, okay. because. First, I'm going to look at, am I bidding right? You know, am I spending my budget? Am I bidding? Am I, you know, is, is the, is the engine running? And then Are second, we getting data? Yeah. am I getting what I want? You know, so the question is, how do you ask yourself, are my keywords working? Right? Because sure. that's, that's kind of a leading question. Are your keywords working? Well, I don't know. They're getting clicks. Are they? <laughs> Says the random agency out there. Yeah. Yeah. They're getting, look at the, all these impressions you're getting. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they could even be getting conversions and things aren't working for real. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Page views. Look at all these page views, which are mm-hmm. conversions for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot there. So are your keywords working? It's hard. The, 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 the question that then begs is what are your keywords doing? What are they bringing in? What are they attracting? The kind of traffic you're getting in exchange for the money that you're spending. And is that what you want? So how do you know search terms? Is that is that the answer? I mean, honestly, yeah. <sighs> do you, do you look at search terms before you look at conversion data? Um, so I think I do from an old school mindset. Like I still, when I get into an account and go, "All right, we're a couple of weeks in. What's going on here?" Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Without even thinking about it, I go to the search I've... terms. I I almost disregard the conversion data before I see those search search terms. I do. Yeah. I mean, when I think about my process on what I do, I mean, I, I, it's like basically just the Insta click straight into the search terms because that gives me, that's like doing a health checkup on my account. What am I spending money? It's like an x-ray. It's like a MRI. Yeah. Yeah. You're that's true. Very true. Yeah. Because that tells me. I'm glad, I'm glad my doctor gets to see more than 60% of my MRI (laughs) data though. So maybe it's not like an MRI. Yeah, it's like sorry, I can. I, we're gonna have to Here's do sixty percent of your femur. Uh, there's no break <laughs> right here. Is fine. in the sixty percent we see uh, the bone <laughs> is sticking out of your skin, but we can't see uh, that part. But we can't see that on the X-ray. So here's some Tylenol. Tylenol, yeah. and uh, if you have a fever, you can. I'm sure, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, maybe not a full MRI, but um, yeah, it's something. It's- it's something. It gives yeah. you an idea. You know what it is? It's kind of like when the doctor is sitting at your knee and he takes that triangle thing and boom, yeah. pops you in the kneecap. And do they still do that? I don't think they do that. I was just thinking that thought. Like I was like, this is another thing I think the kids are missing. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they the have triangle better. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I feel. I feel. I feel old um. in my. That, oh, I'm not even mid thirty. Uh, mid, maybe mid thirties. It happens. But the more crazy and more. thing is, I'm not even old yet, and, yeah. and neither are you. And I, I have much Thank more you. respect and appreciation for people in their sixties, fifties, sixties, seventies. Yeah. I mean, eighties, nineties. People, of course, are going to say things were different and blah blah blah. Like, sure, of course, yeah. those would go way back. Century. Yeah. But like fifties and sixties, they're really dealing with a different world now, and I've I've come to appreciate a little bit of that feeling. Their confusion, be, feeling lost, feeling, you know, like, who are these people? I don't uh, Yeah, I get that a little bit. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they don't have the knee thing. We don't have 100% of our search terms anymore, but we do have we do have a lot of them. And a lot of search, I mean, a little search term data yeah, is it a gives million you times idea. better than nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, so things that you're looking for, you know, to answer your question, are your keywords working? Um, things that you're looking for in your search terms you know, are things like, uh, I mean, the biggest thing, if you're just running, you throw in some broad keywords, the first thing you're going to be looking for, uh, are, are you bringing in a whole bunch of things that aren't relevant? 
Okay, and then that asks, mm-hmm. that begs the question, well, what's not relevant? Well, in my opinion, uh, showing up on, on a whole bunch of competitors, I don't think that's relevant. I don't think that's a good idea. Showing up on your own brand name, I don't think that's relevant. You weren't mm-hmm. trying to show up on your brand name, so that's what your keywords are bringing in. I don't think that's a good thing. Um, showing up on things that are completely irrelevant to what you're selling. You're 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 selling a little little shoes for for puppies. You sell little puppy shoes, right? Um, and you're 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 showing up for uh, instead people that are looking well, for I, I would, running if shoes. If we were in person, I hit you for that puppy non-relatable shoes. example. <laughs> thought you'd like that one i just i literally just pulled like out of no i was like I got oh i know where you pulled it from yeah. <laughs> uh chris that's all well and good like you're targeting keywords like dentist in fort worth texas that thank you mr Brett. and you sh- you should and you that's your keyword but your search terms are like your competitors your yep. brand name your yeah brand that, name. that's not what you're going or, for there or or yeah. are things like um you know things that are somewhat li- related my tooth, my, my mouth hurts. My tooth, I have bad breath, you know, stuff like that. Sure, that's somewhat related to a dentist, but they're not looking for a dentist yet. That's called high funnel searches. And that that's the most difficult part of a new campaign. And yes. for people that are new to Google Ads are, is that traffic that's uh, related, but it's not spot on to yeah. bringing in uh, related, bringing in business. It's related. Related. They did a search like uh, tooth pain or braces for teeth or uh yeah. d- dental i mean even even the word like dental office it's like yeah that's like pretty close to a dentist but it's not what we know is the best stuff the geo keywords like dentist near me dentist in fort worth texas so um and, and it's kind of a it's kind of a you're looking at art when you look at that search terms report like yeah, that's there's true. oh i mean you you said day 400 earlier like day 400 there's always going to be bad search terms that show up yeah, there and you add negatives always. and you you make it better but it's it's more of like you're looking at it and uh what 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 do you, like how much of it is bad stuff and how much of it is good stuff and the campaign is not good until the vast vast majority of your search terms yeah. is spot on good stuff and what is spot on good stuff it's people looking for exactly what you offer um and that's just different to every business but as the business owner as the advertiser you should know if someone's doing a search whether they are looking for you exactly for you or not um and one way to to verify that if you're having trouble with that is uh go to google and do a search for that keyword yeah. that search yeah. term Absolutely. and see not so much what the ads are, but see what the organic results are there. Yes. Um, and and you can really get a feel of, okay, is this someone looking for my kind of business? Yeah. Yeah. Great, great point. Get, you know, get, check, check to see the theme, the topic, the feel of a search. Let me, let me talk a little bit about, um, you know, other things that, that could be deceptive in making you think that, you know, keyword, your keywords are good. Um, question type of searches, research things. How do I, what is, why are, you know, things like this. These are very common in Google and sure, some of these might be good, but if you see a lot of question, research, you know, interest type of searches, this is probably not what you should be putting your money into primarily. Um, And the thing is everything in Google is worth testing. You can try and get these research, these question types of uh, searches, but do it on purpose. Don't just set up a campaign and let the campaign just bring in whatever it feels like. Set up a purpose, go to that campaign, check the search terms, check the metrics in there to see, am I getting what I was shooting for? And if you're not, Mm. make changes appropriately. Now, what do you do if your keywords are not working? Well, that is not the topic of this episode. That yeah, that can go so yeah. far. It, yeah. It's so there's so many angles you could go about that phrase. Uh, excuse me, match types, the kinds of keywords you're targeting, negative, um, negative keywords. Um, yeah. It's just it's so the bidding open. strategy. The I mean, bidding strategy so much. The mix of keywords, the ad group structure, strategy. Yeah, the stuff ad, that's in your ad copy influencing ad copy. what keywords yeah. you show up on. Yeah. There's a lot going on these days, uh, but we can at least tell you if if they're working or not. And that's to go to the search terms report and 
are most of those searches just perfect people looking for your business? So brings up a tough question here, Chris, uh, as number three, but I, I put this in there. It's a very tough question. I think it's more of an advanced thing, uh, but I, it's at least interesting to discuss here. And it is something I look at early in a campaign. Tough question. Am I missing good keywords? And how do you know? Um, so take the question first. Am I missing good keywords? Uh, and I think I have a shortcut and a cheat sheet oh. here uh, on how to get those good keywords in there. But to take the question, am I missing good keywords? Is that something you find yourself asking uh, as you as you engage a new campaign during the first month? Again, your 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 layout in the questions here is impeccable. I, Thank you. Wow. I, wow. And, and for first-time listeners, which we, we get a lot of every week is – more and more people around the globe uh, find about find out about our show. Chris is not. I'm not yeah. a roll. I'm not a dinner roll. He does not butter, butter me, me up. up. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, he does not butter me up for no reason. When we have disagreements, we have disagreements. Yeah, yeah. And then we don't talk for two weeks, and then we take a week off. Yeah. We don't talk for three weeks, and then we miss each other. <laughs> and then I call you, and I, I talk to you like I did yesterday, and I. Sh- Share yeah. the content that I listened to I and watch. Yeah, you I answered, answered when you we, called. We yeah. laughed and we giggled. We did, and we yeah. reunited, mm-hmm. and the the fire was still there. But sometimes we disagree, and when we disagree, we disagree openly. And and you you'll tell me, and you won't butter up my role. But um, right. I appreciate you. You know, okay. Wow, that it's an honest, it's an honest thing, and it's it's interesting that I'm spot on here in, in your view. It's fun. It's nice. That fresh. yeah. Wow, it, it meant a lot to you. I have to try and do that more when I mean it. Um, so that yeah. it, so that it means a lot. Um, but stop uh, skirting around the question here, Chris. This is okay, a tough one, and I need you to answer it. Am I missing good keywords? You like the question, but it, I do. What, I, it, what do you so, what do you what do you do when you ask yourself that? The reason I think it's such a good order here is because this is a this is so much more difficult than understanding if your keywords are working. The yeah. hardest part about understanding your keywords that you're missing is that you don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you don't know. It's impossible to, you know, just pull from nothing like, oh, yeah. oh, there's what I'm missing. There's an obvious hole. You may have no idea what that, you know, what that keyword would be if you don't know what that keyword is. So I, I I'll talk about some wrong decisions on how to find these good keywords. Yeah, let me find let, out what keywords you're missing. And let, let me give the cheat the cheat code here. Yeah. Am I missing good keywords? The easiest way to figure out if you're missing good keywords is to look at that search terms report again. There you go. Ma'am, have we been disrespecting the search terms report in the last few months on the show, talking about all this different stuff, yeah. different bidding types, conversions, blah, blah, blah phrase match, blah, blah, blah. We, we've really gone deep on other stuff. But at the end of the day, it all comes back to still in a large way uh, to search terms. And what I mean by that is even if you have bad keywords, you can get lucky sometimes and you'll show on really good searches and you can look at that search terms report and go, oh, whoa, that is a good search. Yeah. That is the easiest way to know if you're missing good keywords because you can look at those search terms and if there's some really good ones in there, dentist open on Saturdays in Fort Worth, Texas, that can lead to some, you can go, oh, when people search dentist in Fort Worth, Texas, that means they want to go somewhere and they're looking for a dentist in Fort Worth. Oh, that's me. Oh, open on Saturdays. That's some good keywords I don't have. The search terms report is the idea producer for good keywords. And that will let you know if you're missing good keywords. Chris, beyond that, if, you, if you've if you done that already, how else can you kind of figure out uh, or places to look if you're missing good keywords? Yeah, so, well, I was, I was gonna go into um, some bad ideas, but I'll quickly hit on some good ideas. Sure, um, sure. Uh, good idea, just like you said, google.com. Search on google.com. You know, that's, that's great a great idea, place yeah. to find. Go to those related searches that are usually down at the bottom. F- try and find those. Yes. Look at yes. the, the language used in the organic yes. and the paid ads. Those are great places. Like, oh, I never thought about saying it that way. Look, look at that. Look at the headlines of organic. Look at what people are trying to show up on. Look at yeah. the ads. Look at go the to their page. suggestion. Yeah. Go to their go, page. Yeah. Go to their page. Click on a few. Um, you know, go to their page. Look at what they put in their H1 and H2 tags because obviously that's some of the most important aspects of 
Whoa, I just I up. just did a search uh movers whatever. I think it was just movers and a big kind of social sharing site. Uh one their headline literally says movers near me. That's the headline of the page. There you go. Yeah. That's a important. Clue. That's yeah. a gr- that's a great search right there. Um and another thing, one thing that's I don't mention a lot, you know, uh it's kind of interesting. You can go to Google Trends. Um it's it's a tool out there that Google has, and you can kind of see related searches related to the original keyword. So if you put like, if you put a, a, a Google trend and say, you know, uh, movers near me, then go down and scroll to the bottom of the Google trends. And there will be some other keywords that have, that are Google considers to be very, uh, relatable and, uh, uh you know, related to that search. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, possibly spin off from there. Think about what that means, what keywords you might be missing. So that's some good ideas. Let me share some mistakes really quick. Can I, can I share one more good idea? Go for it. Keyword planner. We we just don't talk about okay. it enough, but yeah. there's some, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's improved. The tool's improved and that's true. you can tell it like if you're looking for data or looking for new ideas. So it's a good place to go. I probably don't use that as much as I should. I honestly don't even think. Well, a lot of it, we have the keywords already. We, yeah. The keyword planner, it's based on Google searches and we, yeah, we know how to use true. Google yeah. to go do searches and figure out those keywords. So yeah, it's kind of a, it's, it's a good place to go if you're not familiar with doing a bunch of searches. And so would you say it'd be safe to say once you've done Google long enough that you can, you can look at a web page, you can do a couple searches and you can really gather themes and ideas and possible ad groups really just right in your head and start to just put it on the page without having to do a whole bunch of research. Would you say that that's correct? That is correct. Uh, 90% of the time, two exceptions. One would be some hardcore B2B, as you know yeah, a lot about, where it's sure. just a very niche industry. Yeah. Uh, and then the second thing is, if it's not B2B and it's a service business, and as a 10 plus year Google ads manager, you, you don't have a good idea of what the keywords are based on looking at the site or based on doing everything we just talked about, Google searches and stuff like that. Uh, that's going to be a tough bull and you're not going to make it eight seconds because that is going to be a tough campaign because that means people aren't probably aren't searching for what they offer. And that's the kind of hardest part to, yeah. uh, to Google ads, but yeah, you should, you should have a feel at this point, especially for service businesses. Yeah, but what yeah. what are so what are, what do you mean by bad so ideas? So here here's things that I don't like that I get questions a lot about. Um, going to um, you know uh, keyword systems that scrape other competitor keyword lists and you know spit out a 300 uh, keyword list that other uh, other competitors are are using. I don't mm-hmm. really like that. Um, certainly I think it is not necessarily bad to do that, but I think what happens is people are inherently lazy when they use those tools. So they let those tools guide them in the decisions and they'll just take, um, you know, all those keywords and dump them into, uh, I, I'd rather group. have one great, I was going to say forward, but three word phrase match keyword and yeah. hit go and then see what the data is and, and go f- build from there. As we talk about, like the whole thing is starting small building from, that from is, a small base these days because i just don't like getting too far down the road of a big campaign build like we always talk about you know that's that's before you a, get the data that's why so, i don't like that strategy is so let me let me let me l- idea. let me lay that out and see do you agree with this jason i'm going to give you a campaign with one keyword and you have to run that campaign and optimize it or jason i'm going to give you a uh, a campaign with 400 keywords mm. in one ad group. Bo- both of these campaigns have one ad group, one keyword in one ad group and 400 keywords in another ad group. Which one would you prefer to start with? Oh, one keyword always. Yeah. Always. Yeah, me yeah. too. Always, yeah. I, did, I never thought about laying out the question that way, but that is absolutely where I would go because, and here's why I feel this way, is because if I have 400 keywords and they all start getting clicks, it's already running. It's already been running for a week, two weeks, and they all have clicks. I have a harder time divorcing myself from those keywords and turning keywords off, making decisions, not this one, not this one. That's a harder decision to do than by picking the keywords I do want and adding them. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I I had a be- an example I'm not going to get into or a, a metaphor, but basically it had to do with cleaning up a mess. I'd rather clean up one mess, one keyword, 
yeah. and build it out the way I want from there, then cleaning up 400 messes. And yeah, also the delay of the data is brutal. Like yes. the data is just spread across a bunch of keywords. It's, yeah. yeah. You, so, okay. Might... So going, yeah, going too wide with tools is, is a, uh, not yeah. a good thing. Are there other ways you would not go about? That, that, I think that's, good keywords? that okay. probably hits, that probably hits enough on that. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to take a break. After we get back from this break, we have two more questions that we're going to cover for a new Google Ads campaign. So, Chris, we will be back right after this. Real quick, while you are waiting for the podcast to continue, please pull up your browser and go to optio.com slash PSP. Please don't skip this ad. It's very important because we rely on our sponsor to help us continue with the costs of running this podcast. And Jason requires a lot. There's a lot of maintenance that we have to pay him and to keep him happy. It's yeah. it's really ridiculous. So please go to optio.com slash PSP. Sign up because this, this advertiser is the only advertiser that we are willing to advertise because we really believe in this product. It really is a great product. Phenomenal product. You will like it. But even if you don't, it's only two months and you paid nothing for it. An amazing deal. Optio.com slash PSP. All right, Chris. So the next question here, am I spending the full budget? Should I be spending more? I snuck in a second one there, but we'll take the first one first. Uh, am I spending the full budget? Uh, I, well, I guess we have to take the second one because that's yeah, a pretty the first easy one, question. The first one's pretty much the first question we ask. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, that is uh, that was the bidding, but like, am I spending the full budget? I like to check in on this goal. This is a goal. Okay. Uh, okay. A, an advertiser gives me a budget. I want to make the most of that uh, budget. So, am I spending the full budget? Let's take it two ways. If you are, and you're limited by budget, do you do too much during the first month? Are you looking at already pulling back bids, or do you just kind of go, "Hey, we're." trying to spend the full budget we did, we can tackle that stuff when we get more data. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, I, there's only there's only one reason I ever ask myself this question. And I'm interested to know what you think and you know what, what your thought is. Because when I talk to clients, you know, and the question of money and spending more comes up, I never pass the gate of possibly asking this question unless the client's KPIs, key performance indicator, return on ad spend, you know, whatever it cost per conversion, whatever it is, if the client is happy with the phone calls, the leads, the sales, whatever it is that mm -hmm. they want, if they're getting those, then I consider, okay, now I can ask the question, should we be spending more? I never press that question or even consider asking that question of myself or my client unless they're hitting in the green, they're happy. You know, yeah. there's something happening where they're making money. Yeah, we've noticed the, the phone's ringing more. Yeah, you know, we're seeing more things come off the shelf. You know, uh, sales seem to be picking up a bit. Even if we don't have the numbers to prove it, they have a good feeling about it. They're seeing it. Um, what do you think? Is, is there another reason to consider spending more? Do you think that spending more potentially can wag the dog? Well, am I spending the full budget? Should I be spending more? It's... It's tough because like if, if you're spending the full budget and you don't ask that question and you're limited by budget and you don't ask that question to the client, okay, okay. a Google ads manager could be tempted to go, well, Hey, we're not going to spend more. We're limited by budget. Let me lower the bids, get more clicks overall, more leads overall, and get yeah. a better cost per lead for the same budget. The, the downside of doing that and the risk you take is that you start bidding too low and you start underspending the budget, but even like worse, you start showing up too low and the traffic quality goes down okay. a lot and your conversion rate goes down a lot and your cost per lead actually goes up or the quality of the conversions you're getting goes down. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I've, I've just done that in the past and it's been a mistake. So I like using that. Hey, we're spending the full budget. We are hitting the goals before we even look backwards and say, let's get a lower cost per lead. Maybe let's just go with the cost per lead that's good that you wanted and let's spend more um, and get more leads, more profitable leads overall. Um, because if you just go too low after you've spent the full budget, it can lead to some bad results. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's how you know if you should spend more. Like, 
are we hitting our goals? Um, that's that's it's interesting. Pretty huh? simple. It's simple, right? If if you're hitting your goals, spend. You should be asking, can we spend yes. more? Because you can get more Maximize. leads, and if those leads are profitable, you get more profits. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean that 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 feels like an easy question, but but it's an important one. You don't want to just sit on a yeah a campaign that is getting great results and limited by budget. And since we're going deep on this. You know, to answer the question on, you know, sh you know, how much can you spend? Should you spend more? How much more should you spend? Um, the answer to that question is not necessarily in that giant red warning that says account limited by budget. That's not the warning that we're referring to. What we're referring to, again, is a very deep metric uh, called search impression share loss due to budget. Search lost IS budget. So again, it's in the competitive metrics um, and you can specifically uh, see that number. Now, what you're looking for is a number that is high. High can range from 90%, high could range down to 30%. You know, it depends on how aggressive you wanna be with that spend, but if it is anything above five to 10%, then there's a significant amount that you could be spending more uh, and, you know, it, that number increases as the degree of that percentage increases. Uh, so if it's 90%, you could basically double your budget. If it's 50%, um, you, know, you can spend you know an additional 50% of your budget per day. Yeah, the beautiful thing about limited uh, or lost impression share due to budget is that you can just increase your budget and get the same exact cost per lead. It's the best thing um, to have. Yeah. And just get more leads. It's the best problem to have for sure is limited by budget because it's a yeah. one button solution. I'd say in terms of money lost, uh, the biggest mistake I've seen advertisers make over the years is not growing their Google ads budget. I know how that sounds like I know how that sounds. Yeah. But if you're getting profitable leads yeah. and you could be getting more of them and they're more profitable than any other channel and you don't like lean into that and, and get as much of that as possible, you're leaving money on the table. And if we talk about the biggest mistake I've seen, you add up the money I've seen left on the table over and over and over. Yeah. That is the biggest amount of money I've seen lost. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's something to keep an eye on. So another one to keep an eye on a new one that I'm keeping an eye on oh. is, is it time for performance max and how do we know? So Chris um, performance max is pretty new uh, and pretty powerful. And I'm learning more and more about it every month. And one of the conclusions I've come to is that I got very excited about Performance Max. I was building it alongside search campaigns for every new client. And then a few, few of them didn't go well. And I realized, why am I starting a conversion-based campaign before I have conversions? And so now I'm kind of like waiting one to three months as we gather conversion data and once we have enough conversion data and like the kind of conversions we're getting, yeah. the quality of the conversions, yeah. then it's go time for me uh, for Performance Max. And that's when I decide to uh, add it in there. But uh, do you like that evolution of thinking about like, hey, it is conversion based. So why would you even do it before you have conversions? Yeah. You know, um, I, li I like that you put this as the last one because there is no other place for you to consider this except much later in the life of a Google Ads campaign. And you're, you're exactly right. If you put this too soon before you have conversion data, um, I mean, it's going to be a major issue. So yeah, Performance Max should be much later, should have some conversion data. I, I like that. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, and the thing is, once you've exhausted the other questions, you know, are your keywords working? Uh, are you are you missing good keywords? Are you spending the full budget? You know, you start to run out of, uh, run out of ideas and what Performance Max can do is it can push you into areas that you are missing. It fills in the holes in places that you may not have thought of. You know, it tries it tries the display network. It you know, it tries YouTube. It tries a lot of other things that you may not be willing to try um, and it can do it in a relatively efficient way for you yeah and as things become more uh robotic and more robots with ai and mm. to me i think all ai i'm coming to understand ai I'm, to me all it means is just really powerful computers but they're still computers yeah. they can just generate a lot of tests and stuff like that uh and a lot of data 
Um, but as things become more computer based, um, I like to lean into the fact that we we're humans and we can come up with different judgments. And so like, is it time for, 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 for performance max? Chris, you have two advertisers. They both have a hundred conversions after 60 days. And you're like, okay, it's time for performance max. Well, I think a human can come in there with judgment and say like, well, they both uh, have search impressions. They both have search impression share. They're missing due to budget and they both yeah. have search impression share. They're missing due to ad rank. Okay. And advertiser a is trying to build a brand. It's an HVAC company in Fort Worth. They're trying to build a brand. Okay. They have a lot of assets, a lot of videos, a lot of display. They're doing a lot of email marketing just separately. And company B is a moving quote company and they're just trying to generate quotes. They have a brand, but it's not even a real brand. They're just trying to get quotes and then make money on those quotes. Yeah. Um, both of them could spend more on search. What I'm going to say is use your human judgment. The company just trying to generate leads and doesn't really have a brand and is in a local business. Yeah. Small company, small company. They're, they're all over the country. They, they're not trying to build a local brand. Just have them spend more and get that impression share that's lost due to budget. Yeah. But the company that's trying to build a brand, they can say, you know what? We could spend more on search, but let's take that next thousand and let's let's try performance max because mm. the benefit can be so much larger to them. Do you like isn't that a good way to think about uh I whether like it's time for performance max or not? It's very kind of advertiser based. Like what kind of advertiser is it? I do I I like that. I like that. I think that is uh, that's a unique way of thinking about it, and uh, it's. I think it's a good mental exercise to consider. Yeah. You know, running because your answer, you know, that whole analogy that you that you give there um, answers both yes and no. It 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 gives the answer of no. Do not run a performance max for one, and the other one says yes. Run a performance max, but so but, it's not but always it, but yes. It's, it's great. It's great because. For that quote generation company, like, yeah, I could see them running performance max and getting the cost per lead they need to get mm. at some point. But because the the benefit is so much larger for the company trying to build a brand, um, utilize search fully first yeah. for that second advertiser versus the first advertiser that still wants conversions from performance max, but can also get a lot of other benefits from it. Um, before we even exhaust search, I'm okay with them going to performance max a little bit. Um, as long as we have that conversion data. Yeah. Good stuff. Chris, a, a, lot, a lot coming up in, in the coming weeks. We have an episode next week on responsive search ads. That was the most popular episode of 2022. Okay. Uh, we have new data. We have new information. Yeah. And we're going to share that next week. So look out for that. And then beyond that, a couple of weeks out from now, um, there's new features, new columns, uh, new, uh, assets. And we're going to be covering those. Listen to this guy with his planning on fire. Well, Chris, if, if someone's on planning fire. to get great Google ads, consulting or management, where can they find me? I'm at rothmanppc.com, <laughs> but if they also want great if management you, if, or consulting from Chris, where can they find you, Chris? Yeah. If, if you want someone who's not afraid to wear an undershirt on a, uh, very popular uh, international podcast. Uh, you can reach out to chrisschafer.com. That's C-H-R-I-S-S-C-H-A-E-F-F-E-R. It's hard to spell, easy to do. All right, Chris, thanks. We'll uh, see everybody next week.